I've been consumed with two passions in my life, cakes and cars. And finally, I found a way to combine the two. That is a serious, look at that. What about the old oh, classic Oh, look car. at that, that's beautiful. With an all-American road trip. You might not think of America as the gourmet capital of the world, but you'll be wrong. They love bacon, so I want to find out how they do things stateside. <laughs> so get ready for a sugar-coated, full-throttle journey around the United Cakes of America. Today I'm motoring through Virginia, one of America's oldest states, and learning the secrets of that all-American classic, apple pie. I've never put cornstarch in an apple pie. How do you keep it from running all over the place? That's been my problem. I'll also be getting to grips with decorating a rather unusual king cake, a southern speciality. And we've got faith. Yeah. And then we've got justice. We've got so three balls of sugar here, David. Well, sure. If you want to call them that, that's not my problem. That's it. And in the kitchen, I'll be showing you how to create two recipes at home. Apple crumble cake and a cream cheese and cinnamon bake. Lose weight now and then put it all back on again when you eat it all. When it comes to an American road trip, it doesn't get better than a classic convertible. Funny enough, when I, when I said, yes, I'll definitely go to America and let's travel along the coast in the States in search for food, this wasn't really what I had in mind in terms of a car, but it's like your granny's old bit of furniture. It's hopeless in a straight line. Having said that, I've actually fallen in love with it. I just feel like I should be in a Tarantino movie. It's pretty cool. I'm driving through the state of Virginia. It has a relatively small population of just 8 million, but with around 47,000 farms, it's a big player in American agriculture. And we've just driven past some great stalls selling fresh tomatoes, pick your own watermelons. You know, in the UK, we have pick your own strawberries and black currants. Typically in America, they've got to be bigger than anybody else. So it's pick your own watermelons. It's not just melons. Virginia's apples are worth over £150 million a year to the American economy, and a few of the lucky ones wind up in that American classic, apple pie. See, this is how you envisage every single small town in America to be like. It's a beautiful part of the world. I've arrived in the town of Leesburg. I'm here to check out a bakery so renowned that even presidents have eaten some of their pies. What does that look? Mum's Apple Pie Company is a family-run business that's been making pies for over 25 years, using as much produce as they can from their very own farm. See, this is what I'm talking about when you come to America. It really, it's just the smell in here. Proper pie shop. And I love this ceiling. I've never seen that before. So, Avis. Yes? Busy working. Busy working. Hi there. We got and I'm meeting now. Avis Renshaw, who is the mum of Mum's Apple Pie. So tell me about this shop then, because it is spectacular in here. So. Well, thank you. It's uh, it's just a little shop, and right. we got here in about 99. When we got our farm here in Loudoun County, we decided to make our pies out back here and share that with our, our local community. Because it's the apple pie that I'd like to... You want to see where we make the pie. Yeah. Come on back, and I'll show you the bakery. It certainly smells like a bakery. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> and you've got pies cooking over there as well. We've got pies in the oven right. already. So, and, and you've got the modern equipment over there, but still peeling the apples. We're still peeling Old the school. apples. You take the uh, blossom end of the apple, yeah. try to kind of aim it in there so that the core comes through here. Yeah. And you just peel it. This one actually slices it as well as cores it. Right. Go all the way through. Slice it. This side looks good. Right. It goes into the salt water, which keeps it from browning. Now you use salt water for this, not lemon juice? We use salt water. You can use lemon juice also. Right. But when we do a bath like this, we prefer the salt. And then we right. don't have to put so much in the pie either. Now for the pastry, and it's my turn to do some work. 
Davis's recipe calls for flour, salt, sugar and butter all to be mixed together. So where does this original recipe come from then? Well, the secret to Mom's is that it's Dad that did this, actually. He figured out most of the recipes. It's Mum's pie is Dad's pie, really? Yeah. The water that you're putting in here... You... It's ice water. Right. The, the trick to a good pie crust is cold. If your right. butter is cold, your flour is cold, your water is cold, it, it does what it's doing right here. It right. puts all the bits loosely together without actually developing the glutens in the flour. Yeah. Okay. And that is what makes it flaky when it bakes. Once my pastry's rolled out, it's all about the filling. All right, we're gonna put in just cinnamon, right. salt, a little bit of cornstarch. Now this is where, I, I've never put cornstarch in an apple pie. What do you use to thicken it? Well, do I you don't, use a, I don't. You don't? Yeah. So how do you keep it from running all over the place? That's been my problem. Well, so, now we have yeah. solved your problem. Right. Again, here in the new country in America, we can solve that problem right. for you. Because we're all about corn in America. you got some pretty famous customers coming to your door, haven't you, really? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Obama is quite fond of our uh, sweet potato pie. Yeah. And his wife uh, visited recently to get a cherry and an apple pie. Well, if it's good enough for the president, it's good enough for me. And luckily, a fresh batch of apple pies has just come out the oven. And we're joined outside by Avis's family of chief pie tasters. I'm surprised you aren't sort of the size of the building behind me eating <laughs> this sort of stuff. Farm work balances it out, I gotta Is say. It, right? We eat our fair <laughs> share of pies. <laughs> Why do you think, as a family, American apple pie is so important? I think that there's something just really timeless about it. It never gets any less delicious. It's the yeah. most simple dessert, and you have really wonderful fruit and a flaky crust. I think there can't be anything better than that. <clears throat> I'll agree with that. I think mm -hmm. that's the best apple pie I've ever tasted. It's pretty good, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Not bad. Yeah. Now, this is one of the interesting things that you learn as a chef. I never knew that the apple pie filling had corn flour in there. And then when it was cooked, it held together nicely. It stopped the pastry from being soggy. So what I thought I'd do is not even attempt to make an apple pie as good as that one. I thought I'd combine a cake and a crumble together. Start the cake by creaming butter and sugar together. I'm using light brown sugar for extra flavour. Now I'm going to spice this up with some powdered cinnamon. This is where you could use, especially with apple, a little bit of nutmeg, but also you can get away with a touch of clove. And just to offset that, and to add a little bit of moisture to this cake, I'm gonna add some good quality maple syrup. While all that mixes together, chop your apples. Leaving the skins on means extra texture. Back to the batter, add the four eggs, and then switch the mixer off because the rest of the ingredients get stirred in by hand, starting with the self-raising flour. Almost half mix the flour. You don't want to fully mix, because I don't want to overwork this. And then you can grab half the apples, because we're going to put half inside and half on the top. And just to add a bit of texture into this cake, I've got some pecan nuts. You could use walnuts, of course, walnut halves, but just some pecan nuts. Get the mixture into a cake tin. A spring form cake tin is definitely your best bet here to make sure it's easy to get out later. Now this batter will be slightly thicker. You need that for the apples to hold inside it. Now just before that goes in the oven, I'm going to make a nice little crumble. And for that, it's quite simply with some cold butter, brown sugar and flour. Rub the ingredients together with your fingertips until you have something that resembles breadcrumbs. The Americans do do crumbles, but they, um, they have a habit of renaming a lot of things. In particular, their crumble is called a cobbler, which, if you ask a lot of Americans, was invented over there. You can't claim that one. Then top the cake with the remaining apples and crumble mixture. But that's simply a crumble cake. And all we need to do now is bake this 350 degrees Fahrenheit. That's about 170 degrees centigrade. Gas mark for, for about 30 minutes. Now this is what you end up with. You get a lovely, rich, moist cake, but more importantly, the crumble topping. So you get different textures all the way through, and we'll top that with a fudge topping. Just throw in brown sugar, butter, cream, and maple syrup into a pan. And you can 
tell when it's ready when it just starts to come away from the side of the pan. Remove the cooled cake out of its tin. Cut in half and sandwich it together with a generous helping of whipped cream. And top it off with a good drizzle of the fudge sauce. And there you have my apple and pecan crumble cake. This cake would be a showstopper on any coffee table, but it's also a fabulous dessert, and I think it would go down a storm at Mum's Apple Pie Shop. And whether we're in the USA or England, we do have one of the best fruits in orchards right around the country, and that's apples. And we need to use them a lot more, because that tastes delicious. This is Arlington, just across the Potomac River from Washington, D.C. Its proximity to the capital means that there are people from all over America living here. I'm on my way to see David Gauss, who's originally from New Orleans, the ultimate party town. I think I've got the right place. I've been told to wait here on 18th Street in Arlington. Don't know where he is, but he says, wait here. obviously him. Check that out. How you doing? You'll be David then, eh? I am. All right. How are good you? To see you. Good Very to see good. You. This isn't the standard bike then, is it? No, no. It's a uh, 2004 Deuce uh, Softail. Right. We've had it customised. We've custom painted it. Fantastic. What do you think of this? Oh, I love it. This, really? For sure. Wow. Complete with the original wire wheels or <laughs> hubcaps. Check out the seats, though. Look at this. It. You haven't got that on your hand. No, I certainly don't. It's pretty cool. Nice. It's been around the block quite a few times. Don't pull the door <laughs> too, many, too many times. Exactly. <laughs> so where's this bakery then? Where, where, we're right, where? right down the street. So I'd, Good. I'd love to. Don't go too quick in it, yeah. I'll, I'll uh, go easy on you. I love Harley's. I don't know where I get away with wearing one of those jackets, though. David's going to show me how to make a New Orleans classic, the king cake. We're heading to his Bayou Bakery. But before we get cooking and into the kitchen, I want to find out more about this baking biker. So what's a boy like you from the deep south doing in Virginia? Great question. Yeah. Uh, came up from New Orleans uh, almost 15 years ago, uh, just chasing a job. I was homesick, so I said, well, if I'm going to open a restaurant, outside of Louisiana, it's got to represent where I'm from. So, so you've that got way things can... on the menu like Creole, all that sort of sure, shrimp. Oh, yeah. We've got the etouffee, we got the jambalaya, we got the gumbo. All the sweets that everybody recognizes for the South, but specifically New Orleans, like the king cake. So am I right in thinking the cake itself is like a brioche sort of style? It is. I mean, traditionally, it's sort of a sweet bread uh, brioche, right. and then we stuff ours. I think we better get started. Let's we? do you it. better lose the jacket. Yeah, exactly. We'll put an apron on. Go on, then. <laughs> The king cake starts with a Danish-style dough that's had lots of butter folded into it, just like you'd use to make croissants. You can see all the butter in there, and that's what's going to obviously give us a nice, moist, flaky final product. Right. All right, so we're just going to start off. There's a bit of elbow grease involved as David rolls out the dough. He then gives it a good coating of egg wash and a dusting of cinnamon sugar before piping in the filling. A little quick line. So it's cream right cheese. There. Is that the normal? In New Orleans, we've got all kinds now. They stuff right. it with apple pie filling and cherry and date, right. you know, so it, it's it's become, in my opinion, a little bit too much. Okay. This is a uh, cream cheese filling, so it's got a little cornstarch in it, some lemon zest, some eggs, right. uh, and a little bit of powdered sugar. I like this because it does, it gives it almost like a little bit of a setting custard flavor. The dough is then rolled up to encase the filling, and the ends are linked to create a classic king cake shape. Then it's left to rise for half an hour before going into a hot oven. And once baked, it looks like this. It's all about the garnish with this thing. So That's what, right. what have we got in here? So we go a little bit of icing here. A little bit. Yeah, come on it's now. This is a two ounce it. ladle. <laughs> <laughs> as opposed to the, the eight ounce ladle. With a large coating of icing, it's time for the decoration. I mean, this is pretty boring at this point, right? So we've got three different kinds of sugar here. Uh, each of these are supposed to represent something, aren't they? You nailed it. So yeah. we got power right there. Right. Boom, yellow, gold, power. right? Then we've got faith. Yeah. And then we've got justice. Of course we have. I mean, come on. We've got so, three bowls of sugar here, David. Well, sure. <laughs> if you want to call them that, that's not my god. That's it. Yeah. It's all about tradition in New yep. Orleans. So we got the gold. Right. 
this is what the Mardi Gras is all around. That's it? it. Purple, green, and gold. You'll see yeah. these colors everywhere during carnival. Okay. And so we finish it up with the faith. That's it. And that's it. That's that's the famous king cake. Wait a second. I got something here in my pocket. What is this? Yeah. Got to have this guy right here. This is right. the baby. All right, one yeah. of these. I was yeah, wondering what the t-shirt. He doesn't was. quite look like that, right. but uh, well, am no. I right in thinking the idea is that you share this with the family and the person who gets it that's where they all go the following year. Is that right? What it truly means that you would bring the cake the next time. Yeah. So So you don't want the baby. It's, it's not really an honor, but yet you still want it. <laughs> right. Everybody want... wants the baby. Right, okay. And we can't let this fabulous king cake go to waste. So David has arranged for some friends to stop by. Who's ready for some king cake? I am. The carnival has come to Virginia. Where's the baby? This one uh, sitting topside here. There we go. Here we go. Oh, we need to get the baby. You got the baby. You got the baby. Yay. 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 Hi, James. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers to some, some king cake. And happy with Mardi Gras. Happy Mardi Gras. Mardi Gras. <laughs> I'm enjoying it. Yay. Tastes good, isn't it? Nice. <laughs> I really like that king cake and particularly the flavor of the dough. I'm going to use that dough and make a cinnamon and cream cheese bake. First we need to make the dough and we use strong flour and to that add the sugar, yeast and salt then start to pour in warm water and mix until a smooth dough is formed. It's really important not to really follow a recipe at this point is to look with your eye because if it needs more water give it more water because different flours absorb different amounts of liquid. The dough is ready when it starts sticking to the edge of the bowl. You can feel it's sticking to my fingers. Leave it to rise for 20 minutes and it will triple in size thanks to the yeast. Knock the air out of the dough and roll it out on a floured surface. And now brace yourself for the butter. In here, you need 500 grams or half a kilo of butter. Then we fold it over, and this is called a book turn. We fold it over like pages in a book, fold it over again, plenty of flour, and then this is where you can get your anger out on it. Roll out the dough again. It gets easier as the butter softens, and repeat the folding and rolling process three times. This creates layers of butter within the dough. Ideally what you want for this is to keep it nice and cold, so if it gets too warm in between each turn, pop it in the fridge and wait 10 minutes. But it is tiring <laughs> if you do this by hand. But it's worth it in the end because you lose weight now and then put it all back on again when you eat it all. Fold the dough one more time before wrapping and chilling in the fridge. So this one's nice and cold. Now you can actually see the layers of butter and pastry. And what's going to happen is when those layers heat up, the butter melts, it creates steam and it forces the layers of dough apart. And that's where you get those little air pockets, particularly Danish pastries and croissants. That's where it comes from. Roll out the dough into a big square, about half a centimetre thick. Then just like David, I'm going to use cream cheese in my filling, but I'm keeping it simple by just whipping up some cream cheese with the seeds from one vanilla pod. Spread it evenly over the dough. Sprinkle this now with a bit of cinnamon over the top. So at this point it's very similar to the king cake, and then we can roll it up and slice the rolled up dough into one and a half inch pieces. Arrange them into a well greased cake tin, making sure they're not too tightly packed. Let them rise again and give them a good egg wash. But the key to this entire dish at the moment is they're not too sweet. Fattening, yeah, but not too sweet. And this is the important thing, whenever you're baking anything like this and bread at home, your oven as high as it will possibly go because these need to cook very quickly for a short amount of time. So about 20 minutes, really, really hot oven. 
And as it bakes, the pieces will rise even more and stick together to form one big cake. Now, to finish this cake, I'm going to top it New Orleans style with some bourbon glaze. And that starts with sugar, a splash of water and a good glug of maple syrup. But I'm not done yet. While all that dissolves, I'm going to knock up another quick topping with icing sugar and water. Once the sugar in the pan has dissolved, add a good splash of bourbon and burn off the alcohol and reduce until it's nice and sticky. Then it's ready to be brushed all over the cake to give it a lovely shiny finish. For the final flourish, use a piping bag to drizzle over the icing. And there you have it, my cream cheese and cinnamon bake with not a baby inside, but plenty of bourbon. I'm sure it's a little bit more hard work than the average cake, but trust me, it's worth it in the end because this tastes fantastic. Virginia has been a fascinating place to visit. It's shown me some great southern hospitality and some fantastic cakes. Today's been a good day. And the car's still going. Mm -hmm.